Well, hi, good morning. Thank you for joining me here in my shop this morning. It's January 21st, 2023. Yesterday, in the last video, I finished doing the uh, uh, basic maintenance for under here. I think I've done enough to make it work. We'll, 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 we'll be finding out shortly. Now it's time to do the work on the top. So we'll flip it over. So there's basically two parts to the top work here. Good. It's dealing with this wheel, dealing with this wheel. Why don't we start with this one? Now, first of all, does it need anything to be done? So it's a question of the surface here and how well it uh, um, how well it rubs. <laughs> against the motor. So without the motor running, just getting an impression here, I'm pushing this this way. And you know, my impression would be there's very little traction to it. Let's let's just operate the speed control. Now this should go uh, this should go up and down. Works just fine. Good making sure it's falling into the center of each of these uh, uh, things. <laughs> I'm short on words this morning. Um, and another thing I checked and I did not comment on, you can see them here, there are rubber grommets supporting the motor. They're holding the motor up. These grommets often dry out, crack, sometimes they entirely disappear. That causes the motor to not only be loose and wobbly, but to drop low. In this case, it would drop low. If it drops low, this wheel won't meet the capistan, there's the right word, in the right area. You'll get funny speed things going on. So that, that's a very common problem, but not so with this one. This one, the uh, grommets are in good shape. So we need to, to fix this because the surface here has become glazed, I guess might be a word for it. So we're going to take this off. And these uh, C-clips have a way of flying. So you need to keep your finger on them so they don't go anywhere. lift this off there are washers on top and often there are washers underneath so the ones underneath you can drop and not realize you've lost them there they are there there's one on top there you can lose these very easily I think what these are well just being washers let's see how many are down here sometimes there's more than one no it's just one here I think of some of these players, they use washers to do the fine adjustment of the height of the wheel. I'm not sure of that though. So there, if we look at it, you can see it's quite shiny as compared to this surface, which is not shiny. That's quite reflective there. You need to grind that right off. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, you're going to change the uh, diameter of this if you, uh, if you grind it off. And that will change the speed of the player but it won't. The diameter of this doesn't have a bearing on the speed of the player. If you think about it long enough you'll realize that's the case. Okay, so there's a method for grinding this off. I mean, you don't just want to get some sandpaper. Start going at it with your hand because you'll end up with an uneven result. So I'm going to get what I need to do the uh, grinding the proper way. Okay, first thing I want to do, well, first thing, so this is sandpaper and I've clamped it to my bench here with the sandy side up. This is my drill waiting to participate. My tray of screws and stuff. I found a screw that's roughly the size of the opening there. It's pretty close. It's also come with a lock washer, which is going to be helpful. Two lock washers, even more helpful. Put the 
this on here. you to watch yeah watch down here the amount of stuff that comes off of this my drill is turning in such a way that it's undoing the screw so I'm gonna do I have a reverse on here Wait a minute, I can't tighten the screw here. It's not like this. Yeah, reverse. Do you see how much I've ground off? Do you already see the shine is off the off the outside here? Let's go a little more. Now you might say, how much is too much? Uh, I have run into the too much problem. So we check it with my fingernail, thumbnail. Feels very good. So I'm going to stick my nail into it. Feels to me like the hard shell is completely gone and there's traction there. Can you examine it? Good. When you're doing this, you're trying not to round it off. You're trying to keep it like a flat car tire on here to get the maximum traction. So you don't want to be doing this or doing that. It's going to be level. What if we grind just a little more for fun? Perfect. Okay, that's all there is to bringing that back to life. So now I'm going to uh, stick it back on the record player. So popping these uh, E clamps or C clips or whatever back on is not so easy because they tend to go flying. This is the method I use. Let's put my hand over it so if it does go flying, it doesn't fly far. <clears throat> there we are. Now you can feel the traction against the uh, stop stopped. Uh, oh, it's very good now. Yeah. So that's a huge improvement. Another way to improve the traction uh, around this is this spring. This spring, you got a picture now, when the uh, uh, platter's on, the inside rim of the platter is, is right in here. So this is pushed this way a little bit. And this spring is actually pulling the wheel in between this and the uh, rim where it's actually pulling. You can see that's where it's pulling. It, it could be the case that the pull is not enough. But you need to shorten the spring up a little bit, get a little more pull. You don't want too much on there. Another interesting thing about these guys, you notice this is in the manual position. If I flip it to off, this is loose. See this arm with the spring on it move? Watch, I'll put it back again. Pulls it into place, lets it off. Now it's, it's not falling back but there's no pressure on it. That's to ensure it doesn't sit up against the capistan under pressure. If you leave these guys in not in the off position, then another thing is 
spin the platter by hand until everything is done, all the automatic functions are done, and you can tell the platter is spinning freely. You, you want to make sure it's not in a position where this is up against the cap stand. You leave it like that for two, three months, and from then on, it's going to sound like a train going down the tracks. You know, for them, for them, for them, for them, for them. It's going to sound like that. It's pretty hard to grind out a divot or a dent in one of these. Okay, very good. Now, let's go on to the next part here. This can be a difficult part uh, to get off. We gotta get this guy off. Okay, again, another big C clamp. E clamp, I think, is the official name for these things. I got the right size screwdriver here. Sometimes you can just pull these right off. Other times, it's it's a monstrous task. Let's see what happens. It's coming off. It's coming right off. Fantastic. This should have lubrication in it. It does not. This guy here is sticking up into this raceway. See the funny shape to it? That shape translates to the movement of the tone arm. This shape. This is going to move the tone arm around. This is a roller. And it's good. Look at that. So most of these record players at this stage, especially this one was so dry underneath, this would be stuck in place. Sometimes the record players still work, even though this roller's not rolling, but it just adds to the strain the machine feels when it tries to do the automatic functions. So often you gotta clean out a bunch of old grease. There's just nothing in here. It's like a dried right up. Before we do that though, I'm gonna have a little talk about this. That's a lovely sound. I'm trying to hold one part and shake the other. It's all moving freely. There's no lubrication on this. So this is the device, or the technique, or the mechanism, I guess is the right word, that's used to detect the end of the record. Like I mentioned earlier, you might think the end of the record is just, well, it's the end of the record. Let me get one. Yeah, records come to it in the program end here, and then there's a blank area. And as you can see, the and you you'll notice if you've played a record, the grooves are wide apart here. So when the tone arm gets here, it travels quickly across. You might think, and I always thought, certainly when I was a kid, that the reason the tone arm picks up at the end of the record is because it's reached a certain point, a certain distance from the center, like maybe here. When it gets there, then it picks up. But that's not how it works. The problem with that is different records, are, maybe in the earlier days more so than now, or <laughs> the early, early days, as opposed to the early days, maybe the amount of program material varied a lot. So, what if it ended here? Well, then the needle would have to travel, or the cartridge and the tone arm would have to travel all the way over here. Well, that would take one revolution, two revolution, three revolution. It would take too long. Somebody came up with a clever way to make this happen pretty quick. Anywhere on the record. Well, not anywhere. Actually, this mechanism is only active or enabled or within reach towards the last third of a record. So if you take a tone arm, I don't want to do this to my nice record, but I will, and you put it, this is fighting me a little bit, maybe I shouldn't do this. Okay, I'll just use my finger. So if you bring the tone arm about here, and then move it fairly rapidly towards this area, but don't, don't get into this zone here, just like that, there's a good chance a record player will pick up. Because what it's detecting, what it's detecting is the speed of the travel of the tone arm. It's not the position, it's how fast it's traveling across. Of course, when it's playing a record, it's hardly, it's hardly moving. I mean, it's just creeping along. 
But when it gets into this area, it's accelerated because of the way the grooves are. Well, why not just, why have it come all the way to the inside? Why not just have it stop here? And It needs this accelerated pace to come through. And that's why the detection uh, system is called a velocity sensor. If you look at old, old records, say from 1920, 1920 in and around there, these are really old records. These are big, heavy, non-vinyl records, really big ones. If you look at the internal groove, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't come into the middle. It actually goes back and forth. Like when the tone arm gets to it, the tone arm does this. Well, it's lower, okay, it goes back and forth like this. In those old, old record players, they detected the reverse movement of the tone arm. And when the tone arm went the wrong way, then they knew the record was over and it would pick up. But these ones don't work that way. They work in a different way. Velocity sensor. Now, how does it manage to do that? This is difficult to explain. So I'm going to take a shot at it and we'll see. It involves some extra teeth. There's one right there. And there's another one. Right there. Of course, this is going around. That tooth I just showed you on there is coming around once in a while, almost like an arm reaching out. Is there anything to hit? No. I have to back up the story just a little bit. Let me just back up a little bit. Don't forget what I just said. So this is normally sitting like this, with the gap, the tooth gap, sitting here. It's not going anywhere. The gears on the big platter are not engaging. All it needs is a little kick to do this. Once it gets there, the gears on here will engage with this, and it's going to go all the way around once, get back to this gap, and come and stall out and stop. Now, how are you going to get this thing to kick at the end of a record? So remember I showed you underneath here is a piece of metal coming right to the middle. I said it was all loose and floppy and you shouldn't uh, be uh, oiling it and that. And that in fact it's pushed by the tone arm. As the tone arm comes across, the tone arm with a little pin under here starts to push this rod, this piece of metal forward. That piece of metal starts pushing this combination thing here. Now there's two pieces of metal here, one above, one below, one below here. And they're designed so that if you push the top one, the bottom one will move. But if you hold the top one and push on the bottom one, the bottom one can be kicked, can be kicked back. Kicked back. So think about it now. You've got this bar under here pushing this thing forward. As the as the tone arm travels inwards. This comes further and further forward. Then you have that tooth I showed you on the gear coming around, kicking on this, kicking it back, kicking it back. My explanation's gonna, gonna, gonna fail here, but because I, I, can't, I, I can't spot something. Well, I'll carry on with it because somehow this works. <laughs> if the platter's turning at this kind of speed, the kicker comes by, kicks this back a little bit, and then the tone arm moves a little bit, it's pushed a little forward, kicked a little back, pushed a little forward, kicked a little back. It's got to be like this, actually. Push a little forward, kick a little back, a little forward, a little back, a little forward, a little back. Now, what happens if you move the tone arm quickly, like in the center of the record, the center of the record? And this, this mechanism moves forward quite a ways during the same rotating, single rotation. If it moves forward fast enough, this is the part I can't quite see, maybe this little piece of metal here does it, or maybe this thing in itself does it, I'm not sure. At some point, because it's not getting kicked back out of the way, this other thing coming forward will get caught. And this will cause the wheel to kick like this, and the gear engage, and away she goes. 
It's a terrible explanation. I'm sure there's better ones on the internet. I've done better ones. <laughs> so I've explained this a number of times. This is not maybe the best explanation. It's very important that these pieces move very, very freely because the pressures involved are very low. It's the tone arm pushing it. I think that's just fine. I don't think there's any problem there. You do not want to oil this stuff. It's a little bit corroded in here, so I don't think it's quite as smooth moving as it should, but there's, there's no problem there. Sometimes people have oiled these things up. The oil or the grease has dried up, and a little bit of back friction will, will undermine this this guy. Uh, different record players, they look a little different. Some of them, there's two pieces of metal flat together. And if you get any oil in between them, the oil, the oil, I don't think it has a surface tension, but nevertheless it has some amount of viscosity, then these pieces won't, won't move so freely like this. This one's, this one's done a little bit differently. But I don't think we're going to have any trouble. If we do, we know where it is. Okay, pull this back off. I'm going to throw some uh, grease in there. Again, I'm using synthetic grease. I mean, what happened to the grease that was in there? I, I guess basically it evaporated. I don't know how else to explain it. You could use other greases in here. Once or twice around and the grease will be spread out fairly nicely. And we want this to be turning. This is a good spot to throw a little oil in. Okay, I'm going to use motor, motor oil. Because I believe this is synthetic too engineered for quarter horsepower motors. Long lasting, that might be the hint that it's a synthetic. One drop will do it. That's all it takes. Now there's another surface. There's three things. I forgot about this one. We'll put this on in a moment. It's easier to get this apart. So here comes washer. A ball bearing. Oop, and a washer that came up with it from underneath. And there's a rub usually a rubber piece here. But we're going to leave it there. I don't think it's going to come up. A little bit of rubber. The whole weight of the platter is sitting on these. Of course a ball bearing very important to uh, to have properly lubricated. Now it's not dry by any means. It's probably pretty good. Just for some reason it seems like the top is good on this player and the bottom is not. Let's poke a little out. Yeah, that's very greasy. I don't think you have much trouble in here. You could. This can be very uh, thick and sticky and gluey. You want to clean it all out. Let's get rid of some of it anyway. It's gone very black. And, uh, what am I doing putting it on this cloth? This is, a, this is a dumb move. That's a dumb move. move because I'm going to do something with that cloth three days from now and spread the oil on something there. So I just try to get some of that out. I mean you could go, you could, you know, do the solvent thing and and maybe if this is really dried up and caked and I've seen it that way, maybe you got to get it out with solvents. WD-40 might be good. I like using alcohol and stuff because I don't think it's in any way dangerous. Oh, wait a minute. There was a study done in Canada, just released this week, suggesting that any amount of alcohol, consuming any amount of alcohol, is dangerous to you. 
and the recommendation here was uh, I think it was ten, 10 drinks a week for a man and seven for a woman or something like that. Now it's the recommendation is none. Don't drink. I, I don't drink very much. I never have. Uh, I drink some beer. I drink 1% beer. Mm-hmm. 1% uh, alcohol beer. I never liked drinking because it strikes me that alcohol, you know, that's rocket fuel. That's a solvent. You can use to clean stuff. Getting high on alcohol is very similar to getting high on sniffing glue. Would you sniff glue? No, you think very badly of people who sniff glue. What kind of terrible thing are they doing? They get the same kind of high from it. So, don't drink alcohol. Don't smoke cigarettes. Okay, so now I've got most of the old stuff out. I've got to put in some new stuff. the old stuff and the new stuff. Uh, I don't know. There we are. Hey, does this go in this way or is it going that way? It goes in this way like a cup. Like a cup holding something. Okay, we'll take this. Throw it back on. This, throw it there. Throw that there. Now this is right on the inside of the big platter, which is being driven from the outside. So the fact is, the the uh, uh, leverage is huge. So even if you do have some problems with the lubrication in there, it's hardly going to affect the machine. Okay, let's put my oily cloth away. Now I'm going to put this guy back on. I just don't think that's enough I put in there yet. Let's put some more in. Oh! <laughs> well, that's enough. Maybe can I suck some of that back? So, okay, well, that's a little much. Put some, maybe I can use some of it elsewhere. That's just a ridiculous amount now. Where else could you go? Well, go on the paper towel. Drat. Yeah, let's get rid of the excess here. Okay, there we go. Now to put this in, you got to get that to go into the spindle. It's it's in the middle right here. Uh, sometimes it's tricky. There, went right in right there. You see, this, this is not in a uh, <clears throat> neutral position. I got so much grease on my fingers now. Let's put this back on before I forget. Oh, my greasy fingers. You gotta stop for a minute and clean up here. Okay, here we go again on the high risk maneuver. There we go. We should be able to put the platter on here. Now I can't put it on with, well, I can still put it on with the teeth here. 
Sure. Let's go. There's some chance I put this on in the wrong, like the wrong position here. Never ever thought there was a wrong position, so let's just carry on. We'll put this back. it's trying to play a record when there's no record there is because the overarm is up in the air. In this position, the uh, sort of the out of the way position, it's held high and the player will play the same record over and over and over. It's pretty ugly in there, isn't it? Let me really clean that. Oh, this is going to put dust into the gentler. Okay, we're very close to playing a record now. This works. This piece, when you put the record on, forces it off to the side, the hole off to the side, so it rests on this edge here. So now you have a record sitting here, and it can't, it can't fall off and come down. And then this guy gets moved underneath here. Pushes off. See how, see how it pushes off the lowest record, which then drops. And the next record is held out by this little guy here. And he's, he's, he's done like this, so he can still lift a record off if you need to easily. So you, you don't get. If this were spring loaded and snapped out, the record would snap into this position. You couldn't get it up again. So that's what's happening there. This is moved by the record player at the right moment. And this has got a flat side on it. There we are. Okay, let me get our get the record here. And this is the uh, record I've been listening to when I'm in the shower. <laughs> Oops, did I say something about it won't fall off? It fell off. Shouldn't fall off. sensor here is ready to be struck by the record. Uh, when the record drops, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit this guy. Is this guy going to work right now? I don't know. I'm going to stop and have a coffee. <laughs> and we'll try it. Okay, I think we're ready for the first full test. I've got it plugged into the sound system that you're listening to me through. Power's plugged in. I've changed the record. Uh, this is a record which is not copyrighted. I have an uncopyrighted record. I can play it all I like on on YouTube. Okay, so we're going to apply the power. 
Now the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to turn the volume up and listen for hiss, hum, and stuff like that. Okay, well there's definitely a hum, but the volume's up quite high right now, I believe. So we'll back it back down. Exactly where that hum's coming from. You know, I do not have the uh, ground wire connected to anything, so maybe it's... Let's see, does it work? Put it on speed 33. Power switched on. Manual first, just manual. this was a magnetic cartridge? Maybe not. So I just had it, uh, I had it in microphone inputs just now, and wow, it just seemed to be a little too loud. Okay, we'll turn it. Let's, Let's find out. Here we go. I'm going to flip it on. Auto. Did everything work? Does everything work? Does it play? Oh! What happened there? Okay, they may have to go through a few cycles to kind of wake up properly. I don't think it's playing a 10 inch record. <laughs> just way too light, way too light. So let's heavy it up and I think we might actually have to add some weight right to the right to the front here because I think the cartridge is so light that's in here, the replacement cartridge. How much we got now? That's what's happening. What's happening here? How come I can't lift this? Well, that was a pretty bad <laughs> first shot. I think. Now, hang on. Got a power plug getting dragged along here. Hmm. Looks like the weight is, was interfering here. Let me just swing it a little bit this way. Or is that as high as it goes? That can't be right. Yeah, it goes up higher. This weight, because it's so far forward, it's, uh, it's interfering. So that, that's about as far forward as we can bring it and not have it interfere. Too light. Too light. What do I now? I have something here that's perfect for temporarily adjusting that. What did I do with it? I've kind of lost it. Here it is. It's an American penny. Yeah, we don't have pennies in Canada anymore. Okay, that's much better. That'll that'll do the trick. Let's just put it on. Here's the speed drop. Let's 
put it on again. <laughs> through a few cycles before it all gets working but uh, that's not a very good response frankly that's not as good as I would have wanted okay we're gonna try again Wait, I'm gonna put this up hmm hmm what's happening some parts aren't moving loose enough Wow, that was a very disappointing. I'll be honest with you, that was very disappointing, that whole thing. And I can't get my record out. <laughs> Not the music. Okay, let me cut the power. That was that was full power. There was no restriction in the amount of power I was feeling. flip it right over and figure out what's going on. This is locked again. Oh, 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 I almost made the mistake. I almost made the mistake. This guy's going to fall off. That's not good. Okay, there we go. I'm upset now, so I'm not thinking as, as well as I could be. So the traction problem. Hard to say where it was exactly happening. We have to grind more off this wheel. I think that's the case. I think I ground enough. Let's take a closer look at this guy here. So sometimes you can see a hard shell right on the edge. Now I've grounded away so you can't really see that. Sometimes when I ground these, I, I've ground them on an angle by accident, and what happens is you grind off the uh, grind it on an angle. You get a lot of material grinding off of one one uh, side of the flat part, and not much coming off the other side, which rides high. Then you put it all back together, and it just slips as bad as it did before. 
I think we gotta grind this guy a little more. I think that's what I think that's what has to happen here. Okay. I'll grind it. Dealing with the overarm not coming up. See this little piece right here? That's the piece that's blocking it. Why, 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 did, why did that happen? <clears throat> so I think there's a light spring here when this lever pushes on the, this piece and it's done by this. I did not really lubricate in there and it's full of corrosion stuff or, or dried up lubrication one or the other. So maybe just the lubrication in here is going to do the trick. I can push it with my stick here. here that needs lubrication. I guess all these things get a little corroded over time and they don't they don't slide the way they are supposed to. Plenty loose. That feels plenty loose. Could be uh, some kind of corrosion damage done to the metal rate in here. Could even be the record player's upside down right now. Whatever it is that was there, I've kind of rubbed it off.
So I think that's simply where this arm is. A little finger sticking out there. The idea is you want to get your 12 inch, whoops, oh, 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 you want to get your 12 inch record off. Lift this up. When you lift this over, it swings this out of the way so it won't catch your record. Okay, let's see if we solve those two problems now. Put the bladder back on. Should probably just put a little bit of grease on here. Just a little bit. Okay, because of the leverage arrangement there, you, you can't imagine there's much back friction from that. There we are. Okay, put in the guy here. There it is. Put on the record. visions of our future. There's our future. I know most of these guys. This guy was our real estate agent. <laughs> years and years and years ago. Okay, we're ready to try again. Let me just check to make sure the power is still safe. Enough. Okay, put on the power. Oh, I put on my headphones. I apologize once again if the volumes get out, out of control. Here we go. Are we ready? Power on. Manual first. Oh, see how slow it's starting up. It's just there's there's no there's no traction here. Probably not enough to overcome. Like a surprising thing, you could try this, especially with a, a needle cartridge like this. You take a, take the head shell off, and you become the tone arm. Just hold the needle on the record, and you'd be surprised how much pull there is on that needle, pulling pulling it forward along the record. So, drop the needle in. There's a lot of drag applied to the uh, turntable. No, th this is really really poor. We have not won the traction competition yet. We have another trick to try. Okay, so this spring right here is responsible for how hard this thing is driven into the capistan and into the uh, rim. And we can increase that pretty easily. So I'm going to pop this off again just to get it out of the way. Putting up a fight. So I want to shorten this up. Good. Not to damage 
damage my cutter, so we're going to nip off most of this loop. I can't cut this with these cutters. I make a new loop. turns just kind of wreck them up it's spring steel so it's tricky to work with that back on. This doesn't, this doesn't just pop on easy. Hmm. It's not going to go on there very easily. to do this side. By the time I get an eye, I will stretch the spring. It won't have any, any effect. is there's like two or three turns here and they have to expand to fit onto this and expanding three turns is difficult Very hard to bend spring steel. Okay, if I increase the tension, it's only a little bit though. I don't think I did much there. time. I don't think the 
this is going to work. It's usually when you're, it's coming down to that tension, you, you need to increase it quite a bit. Okay, power is safe, power on, manual. Is good enough. It's better. You know, I'm misinterpreting where the uh, problem is. So it's not sensing the size of the record properly. Okay, wait. Okay. Just ignore the skipping and all that stuff. Hmm, let's change the topic. We'll leave the traction issue alone for a minute. We'll take a look at the needle and just see what condition the needle is in. Oh. Was that on the wrong setting? No, that's 78. You can see the little number 78. Wow, is that ever small? Let's get the microscope on this guy and uh, we'll take a look at the needle, the condition of the needle. Okay, you see my uh, old, old too fancy uh, microscope setup here. That's a USB uh, microscope there. Cheap, cheap guy. This is what it sees. Okay, let's bring the cartridge under. Oh, it's almost in focus. Okay, I'll try to focus a little bit. I don't know if we're going to get there. It's right at the limit of my element. I've got to lower the stage a bit. I don't think I can. Oh, oh, oh. How am I going to deal with this? It's just up a little bit too high. sit a little higher. Well, what we can see there it looks pretty sad. Now the red thing is probably the sapphire on the other side of the needle. Let me flip it over. We'll, 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 get, we'll get a better picture. Yeah, there's the sapphire. There's a good shot of The needle is shot. So the Purplish one is the uh, is the uh, 78 needle. That's a soft needle, and look, the point is gone on it too. But the other needle, it looks horrifying. Wow. Okay. Now let's not be fooled here. Do a little cleaning on that. We need a, need a tiny brush. Let's try a dry cleaning first. Oh, that brush looks huge, doesn't it? Where'd it go? What happened? Oh, I bumped the camera here. Just a sec, I think I can do something here.
my assessment of this is the needle is, is really ruined. It's really, really shot. Um, that's what it looks like to me. But let's see if I can find a, a newer needle to compare to it. And I've got a bunch of other shot needles here. That's a shot needle. <laughs> this one's not as bad. See how much needle? Now look, on the left side of the red thing I'm holding in there. With the colored needle, I don't know. But So basically there should be a tube coming out and then a cone, a tiny cone at the very top of the cone is a little tiny diamond. And I think that's what you can see in this one. It doesn't look good. It does not look good. Now the other side of the coin here is when we played it, it did not play well. It was skipping around on the record. Here I'll hold another one in. Is there? So again, it looks like a sapphire one. I just think the diamond part flat is gone. Um, we may have to order one because I certainly don't stock piles of these. There is a thousand, thousand different types. Okay, so we'll go on the basis the needle is no good. Uh, what more can I do at this point? Not much. I think I reached the end of today. I'm going to have to probably order a needle to get this guy to go, or find one. Uh, I'll check through what I've got. And uh, beyond that, we still have a bit of a traction problem, but I don't think I uh, increased the tension of that spring much at all with what I did. So we have some room there. Um, that's about it. That's about all I can do for today. Gonna, yeah, I think I'm going to have to stop now. Too bad. I was really hoping to have that guy finished and sounding great. But uh, it is what it is. So, Okay, well, thanks for watching to this point, And uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens tomorrow. See ya.